Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about being a kid again. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Fence. Today's Mindfulness Minute is called Practice Mindfulness. Being mindful simply means being aware of the present. Don't just smile at your spouse. Notice the color of her hair, the color of her eyes, the way her chin curves, sticking out, work, notice the hair sticking out of her ears. Don't just eat your sandwich. Notice the slippery meat, the salty pickle, the country, crunchy lettuce against your tongue. Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh teaches that mindfulness is enjoying life now. Han encourages beginners to start with an orange, particularly a juicy orange, a sweet orange. Smell the orange as you open it. Feel the peel against your hands. Sa savor their exploding juices inside your mouth as you take the bite. Think of nothing in the world but that orange. This is how Nan teaches peace. Word up. Word okay, up. Well, we some, you sure that was about an orange? Right <laughs> right. I was like, wait, wait a minute. First of all, I don't want hair in my ear. What happens so next? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then let's let's get into this orange. I mean, it was given what it was given. Yeah, yeah, it was given what it was given. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as you can see, we have a special guest joining us today. I mean, your bio is like ridiculous, but Mr. Keith and Jones, welcome to the show. So let's talk about you for a minute. You wrote your first comic book at 16. Man, at 16, I think I was still running around chewing bubble gum, trying to skate at the same time. And here you are publishing comic books. Now you are hosting annual Comic-Con events. You host an annual Black Comic-Con sort of thing, you know, for lack of a better name. So man, you're like you're doing it all. So yeah. I mean, like I, I, I'm can't, jealous. No I can't drop. I can't write my name. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm a bit of a jack of all trades. Uh by by default. I mean, I I had I have to survive out here in this this harsh world. So instead of waiting for somebody to give me the green light, I, I just kind of made my own door and walked through it, so to speak. All right, so tell the people how did you how did you get started doing that? The the comics or the the comics the, the comics, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the comics. Well, I I've, I've been drawing virtually my entire life, so it started there. I always could draw. Um, but my father, my or he's my stepdad technically. He was in the navy, so you know. Folks in the Navy, they would go overseas months at a time. And to pass the time away, he would read comic books. So when he got home from overseas, he just gave me all the comics he read while he was out there. And unknowing to him, he turned me into a comic book fiend. Um, but I wasn't making my own comics yet. I was just kind of, you know, I was just turned on by, by the stories and the art. Uh, it wasn't until he took me to see Star Wars where I was, I, it opened another portal in my mind where I actually started wanting to create my own visions and, and put them to paper and start writing my own stories. So that was the, that was the genesis of, of me getting involved in this the comic book culture. But as far as professionally, um, I live in San Diego, first of all, and San Diego is the home of the very first Comic Con. And so for many years, even though I was living here, I didn't know that they existed. I didn't know Comic Cons existed. I, I was already collecting comics heavily, but I didn't know you could actually meet the folks behind the scenes. So he surprised me one day when I was 15 years old and took me to one. And uh, that experience just blew my mind open. And I realized that I needed a portfolio to get work in comics. Now, obviously, I was still a kid. So I had, you know, um delusions of grandeur <laughs> but uh I, I i felt i had the talent to do the job so the very next year when i turned 16 i came back with a portfolio of, of drawings and I just showed it to different publishers there and sure enough i got my first i got hired for for excuse me for my first gig uh, off of that portfolio with the uh, apple comics 
and they hired me to draw a Dracula story. And so that was the that was the shipping off point in my professional career. Even though I didn't I didn't just I didn't segue right into doing comics full time from that point. I I I made the book, but there was a long pause through the nineties before I got back, back to comics because I went to um, I graduated high school and went right to Cal Arts in LA, which is a Disney funded school that that basically teaches animation. Because I thought I was going to be an animator. And uh, but that's a whole movie in itself. What happened to me up there? Because I didn't finish the, the school was too expensive, so I ended up dropping out. But I decided I wasn't ready to just go back home. So what I did was <laughs> I secretly went to class. So I'm I'm basically in the back of the class, still, and just didn't try not to bring attention to myself, and did the did the work anyway. Even <laughs> I was like, I was like, nothing's gonna stop me from doing this, and so um, I would uh, support myself by going down to the school uh, job board, and I was like, I don't see anybody else taking these jobs. <laughs> I would just, like I said, secretly write it, write the write the, the contact information down, and call these people up, and they're like, Hey, how did you hear about us? Oh, yeah, I'm a I'm a student at Cal Arts. Oh, okay, well, come on down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got work, and I did that for you know for many. For I stayed up in LA for about six years doing stuff like that, whatever I could to get the to get the work. So that's dope. Steady, steady, staying steady towards the course, just trying to get it in. I love that. I mean, I nope. was I wasn't even supposed to be on campus. I was sneaking through the window to to, to stay with my girlfriend because <laughs> she was enrolled, and I would have to sneak around RAs and all that stuff to get to find them place to lay my head and all this stuff and it was a it was a movie <laughs> that sounds like it. i can't wait to see that on film or even in a comic yeah uh, <laughs> speaking of comics we actually got to meet you a few years ago um before the pandemic at um at the african-american museum in ohio in wilberforce ohio oh, wow. there was a, yeah it was a black comic expo yeah. there and you were on the panel and uh i was a uh, rereading power nice today and i just it was it's just amazing because a lot of people don't know about independent comics and the power that they hold and seeing that you at that exhibition just you know a lot of people don't know that how many black creators there are and talk to us about how important it is to get that word out super important because there's a lot of noise right with the with the advent of the internet there's a lot of noise out there distorting Black people in general, you know, and unfortunately, some a lot of it comes from our own folks. So we, we have this stereotype that we are, to this day, it persists that we are athletes, rap artists, um, basically, you know, stage entertainers, and that's a, that's the extent of our talent. So it's always, oh wow, you you speak so well, or oh wow, you you're a doctor, or oh wow, you're you know, anything that requires brain energy. It's, an, it's it's seen when we when we do it it's like front page news even though we've been doing this from the time we landed on this rock you know um so the good thing about the internet and to answer your question is now we have the power to kind of start um telling our you know telling our own story with our own voice and so i took it upon myself to not only make comics but in but inject characters of color particularly uh african-american african-american because that's what i am so that's that's what i know but also other characters of color um have an opportunity now to be the be the lead character be the focal point of the story versus being the sidekick or comedy relief right and um the importance of that is I'm a kid that grew up with, without having that. I had to basically accept Captain America, accept Spider-Man, accept Superman in the form that it was given to me, right? And not that I'm not as a, not that a child necessarily thinks about race, but subconsciously it starts to seep into your psyche that oh, I guess um, I can only do so many things because that's the only thing that's shown to me. You know, it may not be verbalized to you, but psychologically, you get hit with, hit with enough imagery that is going to set in 
So my job as a black creator and um, creators like me, we're trying to change that narrative by showing them, no, you, you're the hero of this story, you know, and, and you, you're the cool guy in the story. You're the, you're, you're the toy that kids want to buy for Christmas. You're the guy or the lady. So um, that, that's basically what I'm trying to do with the kid and, and power nice. That's dope. That's dope. And I and, and up to that point, I never, I saw you online, but I never had access. You know, I never had one of your comics and uh, going to that convention. I think that must have been like 2018 or somewhere around that time. It was yeah, it was before the pandemic, and it was just getting to see that history of black creators and you know along with the majors like marvel and dc and seeing all the independent creators i was like this needs to be more visualized and people need to see this more often so you guys see the sea change now i mean if you just go on netflix you see all those black shows now right all these all all types of genres with black folks in it right Right. Well, I attribute that to a couple of movements that la- that started maybe a good 10, 15 years ago. Um, what what I categorize, what I do is categorize under um, Afrofuturism. Right. Okay? And but then you had the Black Lives Matter movement. You had the uh, all the re- um, all the recent protests over the last ten years, and 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 voices out there in the media who are. Who are pro black or pro equality i think they we have we have literally changed the narrative to what you see now in popular media right the only the only hurdle to get over the next hurdle to get over is that even though you're seeing a lot more black faces on screen now and and in comics and all the stuff it's still bit behind the scenes is still an issue so you know the, the the way it's done is still an issue. You know, um, all <laughs> what's this in? All 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 skin folks aren't kin folk. You know, so mm. there's still there's still some some muddled messaging happening because the voices right. aren't aren't pure or coming from an honest place. So we still have that hurdle to get over, but we're we're getting there. We're getting there. So you know, I'm seeing the, the industry is completely different than. 10 years ago. I like that. And one of the things that I noticed about, you know, the, the events that you do, which I have to seriously applaud you for is not only are you finding and celebrating black creators, but female creators, the event that Pickett was talking about that we went to, there were at least eight females there and we bought books from like each one of them. And then for, like for Micheline Hess, I bought her whole set for my daughter. And I was like, I said, I need all three of them. Because if I just take her home one, then she's going to be like, well, what happened, you know, in the next story? And what happened with the next one? So I have to just give you props for that. Because so often, you know, we talk about, you know, Black people not being invited into these worlds. Women are even less invited, you know, into these oh, yeah. worlds, into these circles, you know, than Black people. Because, you know, we're still just... You women know, girls don't, of, love, women, girls don't women, read comic books. So yeah. thank you for crushing that stereotype. Oh, no problem. Women are getting a lot of um, resistance right now in popular media by, unfortunately, by the comics, so-called comic fans, male comic uh, fans out there that, that are stuck in the past and uh, or, who are feeling, I don't know why, they're just they're feeling intimidated by the presence of strong female representation in these films. In these, and or comics right. and i just you know it's it's just strange behavior i never grew up around dudes like that like we don't, we don't yeah i don't i don't get it either it's real yeah. weird <laughs> it's like like bro you need to go outside or do something get out your basement i don't know what it is but this is some weird behavior um, it's very it's, weird yeah it's like you know your mother's a, a woman right <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> like what's going on here and then on top of that it's fantasy it's like well how can she she can't beat up five guys well she can if she has superpowers just like a, right. just like a dude can't beat up five guys at once if he doesn't have superpowers so what are we talking about right it's not real you know 
it, it's as if to say with the Afrofuturism that you write about and you draw about that there's no women in the future. Because if there's no women in the future, I feel sorry for all of you men. Like some of y'all gonna starve and be dirty. And won't won't even exist. They gotta come through some portal. Right? Exactly. <laughs> right. Come from somewhere, come from somewhere. But um, but it I don't try to pay too much. I don't get online and go back and forth with these folks. I really have curved that behavior for years now. Like that's not my thing. And I, I've learned mm -hmm. that it's counterproductive. It really you just inviting more negative energy into your space and stalling yourself out. So the movement's going forward re regardless of the naysayers and loud voices out there because change is always in inevitable. It, it is what it is. And you, you know, the old saying you adapt or you die. And um and that's what it is. But you should no 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 one should feel intimidated by the opposite sex. You know, uh that's just that's kind of crazy thinking there because we I mean we live on the same planet, we're not going anywhere and and there's enough there's enough pie for everyone. It's not like uh oh I go into a comic book store and like oh, give me give me all the men comics, all the male comics. <laughs> the rest. You know, that's not how things work. People like what they like and they you know one day you like Chinese food, next day you like Japanese food, next day you like Italian food. So you know you like you, you can like it all. It's not an either or uh choice here. Or so so tell us about the con you have coming up. Black Comics Day. Uh Black Comics Day they debuted in 2018, literally, literally the day after the first Black Panther movie premiered. Okay. And that was not by that was not by design. That was a pure accident. I I literally just almost I opened up the calendar and basically stuck my finger, I'll take that day. And it just and when the day came around, it's like, oh, it, act, it 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 was the day after the Black Panther movie premiere. So that energy, that I think that energy helped feed people to the show. And it turned out to be a very successful show, especially for a first time show. And so we've been rolling ever since. So we're about to embark on the fifth show and and um it's only gotten bigger since since 2018. And basically what it is, it's a if you take Comic Con and and you fill it up with um, primarily black um, writers and artists, male and female, in one building where folks can actually come and interact with these people, see them in real time, talk to them, um, see their artwork, and uh, basically instead of being told about uh, all, all the stuff that we do, that black folks do behind the scenes or or, or in the arts, you can actually come see these folks in real time. And like I said, it's a departure from what we're normally shown as with, with the athletes and the and the and the rappers and all this other stuff, which is fine. But you know, this is something that barely gets the spotlight, and um, that I thought it was a show that was necessary to have. Um, there are some shows like it across the country, um, with varying degrees of success. But this uh, Black Comics Day happens to be one of, at least what I've been told, this happens to be one of the better shows. And uh, I'm grateful for that. And um, and, it, and it also shows that Black people do come out and support Black-owned business and Black products. We do. You know, that's another false narrative that's out there is that we don't support our own. Like, yes, we do. I have proof positive of that. <laughs> You know, it's That's recorded history. It's recorded history, because every artist sells out. We've done four shows up to the point, and up to this point, in each show, every—I'm not even exaggerating—every artist sells out. They go home empty, empty uh, boxes. That's dumb. And a pocket full of money. What? I don't know if you take a look at any of the six bookshelves we have around here. They are full of black artists black comics every time we go to an event you know we're always like okay well if we only eat fast food for lunch and for dinner then that's more money to buy comic books when we get there and we're telling the kids hey eat the continental breakfast at the hotel because it's free <laughs> then you won't be hungry until later because we already know that we're about to spend money we're about to you know buy t-shirts and bags and 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 merch because yeah. we believe in supporting and we believe in 
supporting the things that we want to see more of. There's so many people that, you know, complain about the negativity and they complain about this and complain about that. And instead of us complaining, we take our time and purchase and participate in the things that we want to see more of. So we want Black Comics Day. We we want one in every city. You know, we want to yep. see it be that big. Definitely. So yeah, so we. I mean, you just come and on to, in with the you like, to address that issue you just told about the saving the money, and like that's one of the reasons I, I'm trying my up, at least up to this point, I made sure that the show is free admission. Like you know, there's free parking and free admission. So that's that's uh, money that can you, you can use, to, like you said, to purchase um, products. That's yeah, that's we, real we dope. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. And we used to, when the kids were smaller, we used, like you said, we used to travel. Like, um, we actually stayed probably about um, 30, 40 minutes away from that event that was in at the African American uh, History Museum in Wilberforce. But we would go to like to Detroit to MeccaCon, which is about three and a half hours away for us. Yeah. Uh, we would travel to SoulCon up in Columbus, Ohio, which is about an hour and 10 minutes away, which we're making that trip all the time now because our daughter's at Ohio State. Oh. But um, yeah, so we used to, when they were younger though, we would try to get to ones that were somewhat close to us just to, you know, have that so that they would grow. So they actually grew up seeing black comics and black cards, uh, you know, artists and characters. But I know a lot of their peers didn't. Right, right. And I think that's why it's important, you know, for which the work that you're doing is very important. And hopefully one day we can get out to the West Coast and come to one of those. Yeah. Oh, please do. I'm still fighting battles, though, as far as like, there's a lot of stuff people don't see me doing behind the scenes, put this show together. And it's like, I still, I'm still, um, I get frustrated with the school system, not understanding the benefit of bringing, uh, uh, of promoting a show like this. I mean, it's literacy, it's the arts, you know, and, and, and it's like, I, um, up to this point, I contacted these people. I physically went to different schools in the, in the area, handed out flyers and all that stuff. And I don't think it got past the administration office. Mm. You know, they tell me, oh, this is great, blah, 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 blah. But then I think it dies the moment I walk out the door because they just think, oh, comics, black history, whatever. You know, mm -hmm. and it's not, I don't want this is not everybody. We're talking about individual folks who have the power to move the needle. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And they still, they're slow to the show. They're slow to understand what's going on with, um, they're, they're, I mean, it is it's your job to educate the children, to make them productive citizens, and lead them in the right directions. And this show, even though it's cartoons and comic books and stuff like that, it's a positive experience. It shows, and also career wise, there's layers to making a movie or layers to making a comic. It's not just one artist and one writer. You have colorists, you have designers, you have letterers, you have the writer, of course, you have the guy who actually draws it, you have someone who inks it, you have someone who colors it, you know, and then in film, you have someone who you need a, a set designer, you need a seamstress. You need a a, 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 a a carpenter. You need all of these elements, all of these um, all of these arts and, and different jobs to make just one movie, right? But the school, the way our, the American school system is set up, they've they've cut away to our programs, not advanced them. So it's so you know the the, the, the their thinking is short sighted and myopic. They don't. They don't know they're doing a disservice to these kids by taking all these art programs out. I agree. You know, I agree. Yeah. As an educator myself, I see it. Whenever they, you know, they start talking budget cuts, the first thing that goes is the the music program, the right. art program, the PE, any after school things that that we're doing that are not just cramming <laughs> and they memorize really this information to take the test. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> That PE because these kids sit on these phones sit uh, for hours, not moving a bone. Right, they really need to bring that back. So. Yeah, definitely. So go ahead, Lady Bounce. So when we're... is this year's uh, Black Comics Day? So oh. the, coming up, when it, what's what are the dates and where can we? Okay, where so, are we going? so Black Comics Day, two thousand twenty-three. 
mm-hmm. takes place February February 11th through the 12th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. And the show mm-hmm. the show takes place around in February every year for to uh, to highlight Black uh, History Month. It's, uh, it's it's basically a Black History Month event focused on the comic arts and Black arts. And like I said, uh, it's February 11th through the 12th of next year. Uh, it takes place in San Diego, California, at a at our biggest tourist tourist attraction area called Balboa Park. And within Balboa Park, it's situated in the building called World Beat Center. I don't know if you heard of it, but World Beat Center is a cultural um, exhibit that has that's run by a woman called Makeda um, Cheatham. Um, and she's she's a bit of a San Diego legend herself, and uh, she's uh, she 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 her background. Uh, she's she was good friends with the Bob Marley family, and she has a lot of history with him. And she actually started the first. She took what she was placed, and this is I was a little kid when all this was happening, but she brought reggae to local radio here. They wow. gave her on their on our local rock station. They gave her a reggae section that she used to host back in the day. So that's how she built her name up here. Wow! She runs the World Beat Center in San Diego, California, which is basically an Afrocentric um, um, culture center. And there's, she has different events going on every other weekend, whether it's African dance, African drums, or uh, Bob Marley Day. Or like my show, Black Comics Day, Earth. She does Earth Day, so on and so forth. So anyway, I say all that to say that it's a popular place here in San Diego, and that's where Black Comics Day is going to take place um, again this year or next year. And uh, it's free to the public. Uh, parking is free. Um, there's food on site. Um, there'll be. Two panels, one for Saturday and one for Sunday. And our special guest will be a special guest, plural, will be one, Rodney Barnes. Rodney Barnes is the writer producer of shows of HBO's Winning Time, The Laker Story. He's also written Boondocks. Um, he read, he wrote uh, Everybody Hates Chris. Didn't he also write the Wu Tang Saga? Wu Tang Saga. Yep, one of my okay. favorite shows. Oh, that show's incredible. Yeah, uh, and it's for com- and he does uh, he does Mandalorian, the Mandalorian comic book for Marvel. Wow. Uh, and he's yeah he's got a laundry list of things he does. He's a super busy man, super talented. Oh, oh. The Go other on. special, huh? Go ahead. Oh, our other special guest is um, Kevin Grievux. He is a actor, writer, producer himself. He is the writer of the movie. Remember the movie Underworld with the werewolves and vampires? Oh, yeah. Yeah. He wrote, he wrote that. And he's also the, one of the actors in the movie. He's the, the big werewolf dude, the, the brother, the deep voice. He, that, that's him. And uh, he's written a a gang of comic books for all the major publishers, Marvel, DC, Image, um, from Spider-Man to Black Panther, to X-Men, you name it. Um, And then our other final special guest is John Jennings. I don't know if you know John Jennings. Oh, yeah. We saw him at uh, SoulCon in Columbus, Ohio, a few years back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's an important guy as far as like this whole... Ushering in black talent into the into the popular arts as far as the um, the comics and graphic novels go, he uh, he is the he is a writer artist and he's also a professor at UC Irvine. Uh, but he most his most popular work right up to this point is the adaptation of Octavia Butler's Kindred, which is now streaming on one of these. I think it's Hulu. Hulu. But he did the graphic novel version of that of that series, uh, and Octavia Butler's uh, Parables, Parables of, of the Sawyer, Sawyer. Sorrow, yeah, I think Parables of Sorrow, yeah. something, yeah. yeah. He did the graphic novel for that as well. And so those are my three special guests, and the three of them, among the three of them, the one thing they have in common is horror. They're they're horror aficionados, which is so, weird because 
Uh, I don't really like horror movies. <laughs> it's really scary because I don't like being. I don't. I have a high imagination, and those things freak me out. I'll watch. <laughs> I'll watch them, but I don't go looking for horror movies. But, uh, <laughs> you sound like Jay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> yeah, especially when they're based on a true story. I'm like, oh, oh no, can't do this. <laughs> right. <laughs> But uh, but they they're they're excellent horror um, uh, horror writers. Sweet, so that, should be, that should be fun. And uh, I'm excited. Yeah, and then my other panel, I'm still I'm still putting the show together. But my other panel, I want I'm going to have some of the our other artists on one panel, and we're going to talk about the question of old versus new. Do we mm. do we really want original black characters or do folks really want to see white characters turn black? Mm. So that's going to be mm. the question on that panel. That's because interesting. That's yeah. Among a lot of us artist types, we always having that debate. We get a little frustrated with that. Like, mm -hmm. you guys want Marvel to do everything for us when we have original stuff already existing that you could support instead of worrying about what Marvel did or didn't do. Right, right. Especially turning the you know established white characters to into black folks, and I'm like, I don't particularly get too excited about that. Like, eh. you know, uh -huh. basically, you know, some of us feel like that's a hand me down thing. Mm -hmm. Here, take this and, and stop complaining. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, now we got our own original books out here. We're just as capable. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I, I definitely agree. I think that, uh, like you said, there's a lot of independent black creators that, that we can explore to make movies and TV shows out of. Oh, yeah. You've heard of Milestone Comics, right? Yeah. You remember Milestone? With oh, yeah. Comics? Oh, yeah. Hardware and all them, right? Okay, oh, yeah. So here we are in 2000. We're about to go to 2023. They've made, they've made, I don't know how many superhero movies. I have yet to see a Milestone live action movie so what's the whole mm. yeah and, and they've been talking about static shock for like how many years now right. that they're and still you know I nothing's materialized anything. i don't see anything I, people talking about black superman and and stuff like that. i'm like black superman how about static <laughs> you know exactly i agree so so yeah. that's what I, that, and that's what I mean when, when we started this conversation. When I was trying to tell you guys about, we need work behind the scenes. We need still, still need to make work behind the scenes, make changes, uh, mm -hmm. because you can't. And I don't expect white folks or people outside of our culture to write about us and 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 we and not make mistakes because they're not us. They didn't live their life. So how do we right. why do we expect them to write an accurate portrayal of us? You know, right. That's like going into somebody's house and calling yourself knowing their house better than you do. Uh -huh. right. they, 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 they do you know, De yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, so tell right. the people how they can uh, go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, I was just, just going to say, like, I agree because, you know, Piggy and I were talking the other day. I'm like, if I see another, you know, slave movie, if I see another, you know, 1922 movie where you know like it's like they're reminding us to stay in our place or you know stay in this box that we continue you know to, to put you in like there's right. no new ideas in Hollywood being generated or there's no you know new ideas or new characters being created so we definitely need that more push you know behind the scenes and those those people willing to go in those offices and you know knock over the water and kick the books off the table and say no you're gonna listen to me or you're right. gonna listen to us that we have a voice too so definitely but if we keep you know just shoving curriculum in kids heads we're taking away that that creative force that makes them you know think outside the box to create things or and even think outside the box to get those creations known to the public so you know thank you for what you're doing to keep pushing and not stopping because it is easy to get discouraged when it looks like you're getting a bunch of no's and and we definitely you know applaud you and big up you and share your stuff everywhere you know whenever we can we're, we're definitely fans thank you fans. <laughs> i appreciate it i appreciate it that's all Lord. it's good to hear that because sometimes you do feel like you're out in the wilderness by yourself. Um, you know, you, mm -hmm. 
especially when you get online and, you, and all you see is negative story after negative story and it's it's like man can we do anything without it being a controversy like yeah you know it's, um, it can be really uh discouraging but um all right. so I, tell the, so tell the people how they can get with you and support you the, the the uh convention coming up and not only that but uh where they can buy your books at okay so now me personally i run a company called kid which is on this cap here the logos right here and that kid stands for the kid and you never die because i created the power nice when i was about 11 years old so i've basically been holding on to that that's the philosophy of my personal company and so to find my stuff you find it on kid dash comics.com that's kid hyphen comics.com and my my books my caps and my shirts can be purchased through that website or if you catch me at a convention then obviously you can get it there live and in person um and i'm on all the mains i'm on instagram i'm on twitter even though twitter's eh. <laughs> yeah. that's that's becoming a little like unbearable um uh -huh. uh, if you when you see this logo that's when you know you found me um and what is what is and my instagram is kj let me see i got it right here this is my book by the way for, for your audience this is this is issue one power knights subtitles called power knights blades of liberty because it's a redemption story it's basically former tyrants have an opportunity to rewrite their history as heroes so mm. the story starts without the spoilers. Screen here, weird. Um, uh, this they these these characters these these heroes so to speak were conscripted by a king against their will to conquer worlds in his name. So they they conquer worlds and defeated um, worlds uh, against their will for this king. They eventually broke away from the king, but they were still considered guilty for all the stuff they did, all the horrible things they did, right? So they were sentenced to death mm. uh, because they were considered too dangerous to exist. They were sent into a black hole. However, they came to the other end into our universe and it ended up here on Earth. So here they, have, here they are on Earth. They have a second shot at life. They can rewrite their history as heroes. But the way they get to that point is they decide to make a pact between each other not to interfere with mankind, considering what they just went through. How, however, one of them, feeling paranoid, doesn't want to run, run the risk of being someone's slave again or under someone's rule again. He's going to use his power to take Earth as his kingdom to protect his future. So that forced the others out of hiding to stop him because they believe everyone should have free will. And that's the crux of the mm. conflict in this story. And these two brothers, these two kids, I don't know if you can see them uh these two they're, they're uh, the big brother and little brother they're just like you and i regular folks they get caught up in the middle of this conflict and we kind of watch them maturate into heroes themselves so that's basically what's going on with power nights it's a six part series issue one of six is out now through the website or, or if you see me at shows and um hopefully issue two is to be should be ready uh by february and that's what I'm doing with that. And like I said, um, I can always be found on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You just punch in Keith and Jones or Kid Comics and see this logo. You found me. Um, yeah, that's that's what's going on with me. <laughs> all right. Uh, so with, with all the work that you do, what do you do for self-care? What's something that you just do just for you to kind of break away? Well, I suffered a heart attack last December, right? Wow. And I have, I was diagnosed with high cholesterol, okay? Now, I knew this before the heart attack. So I had a whole year in advance before that happened to me of changing my diet, right? Which I did. I changed my diet and I immediately, once I did change my diet, Within 10 months, I lost 10 pounds. No, within one month, I lost 10 pounds. And I had new energy because before I changed my diet, for some reason, 
I would wake up after full nights of sleep and fall asleep at my desk. Not maybe a couple hours after I had already woken up. Like I'm at the desk working and I'm feeling sleepy. And I'm like, what, what's going on? I can't wait. You know, I have to go back to sleep already. So when I changed my diet, I immediately found that missing energy. So for instance, mm. uh, instead of white bread, wheat bread. Instead of white rice, brown rice. Instead of a bunch of um, red meat, chicken, fish. And I found new energy. I was able to you know, last long and I was more, more, more sprite. You know, I had more, more going on there mm. for me. So, so that solved that problem. Thank God, because I need those hours to get all the stuff done. Because <laughs> <So, laughs> I'm always, because in my youth, when I was putting the company together, I was still young enough back in my 20s and 30s when I was doing all this stuff. I literally would go to bed every night at 3 a.m. Wow. And I had to, and the only way I was able to do it was, one, I love what I'm doing, but second, I just, I was young enough to pull it off. Because at one point, I was, imagine this before. I'm, I'm completely independent now. Like all I do is I wake up and work on comics. I don't have a day job. It is 100% comics. That's how I make my money. But before that, to get to this point, my schedule used to be go to my day job, nine to five, literally from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I had one hour to go get my daughter from school, my kids from school and get them situated. And then at six o'clock, I had to go to school from six to 10 p.m. And from 10 p.m., once I got home from school, I would stay up till 3 a.m. working on this book. And I did that for a good two or three years. Wow. Wow. So, so uh, as, uh, I got to the point where, and I'm going off on a tangent here, but I got to the point where I had to make a choice. Either these comics or my day job, because they started to overlap. They started to interfere with each other energy-wise. Like, okay. Now I'm falling asleep at work. Or well, now I don't have the energy to do my comment because I'm burning both candles here. So uh, I took a, I called my mom. This was back in 2013. I called my mother and I said, do you trust me? And she's uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to move in you for one, move in with you for one year. Give me one year to make the transition from my day job to, to running my own company. And so she allowed me to do that and and um, it worked out and I've been independent for the last six years doing this comic book, comic book thing. Wow. So, and that's, wow. and, and that's how, that's your answer to, answer to my self-help, self-care because it relieved a lot of stress off my mind where I don't have to clock into anyone's clock. I don't have a boss breathing up down my, over my shoulder. Or worried about getting laid off or fired and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so, example of that was when the pandemic hit, it was business as usual for me. I'm not going to fire mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> 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 so I had already established myself with my my personal clientele. So it was just it was just another another day for me because I I work at home in my my home office and. Um, and that's the way that's the way I want it to be. But it took a lot of a lot of sweat, pain, and tears to get to this point. And I'm still I'm still trying to get to the point where where I'm strong enough and financially well off enough where I can um I want to be able to basically take talent I see out there. Like if I see a young brother or sister out there with with talent and, and ideas, I want to be their financial back backer. I want to like, hey, mm. I like what you're doing. I'm going to put you on. It'll be through kid, but you can, you retain ownership. It's just, we're, I'm going to produce it. I'm going to distribute it for you and give you the time to create and do what you need to do. Because I believe your project is viable enough to make not on you, new money, but my, but make myself money and represent the community in a positive light. So that's, that's my true. ultimate goal. And that's what I'm working toward. And, and Black true. Comics Day is just one of the, Black Comics Day is just a representation of that. Of, That's dope. Uh, I like that. Love it, love it, love it. Well, before we get out of here, let's get into my favorite part of the show. Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> Brain science, 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 science. All right, so we've been talking to Keith then about being 
Jeffrey ever dies. It's the title of this episode. It's the title of his his company. So I'm going to teach you how to be a child again. Research has proven that children are more creative than adults. This has something to do with the brainwave patterns of a child, but also to do with them not having learned perceptions of how something ought to be. They don't think about what has happened in the past. They live for the moment and think about now. Rules do not exist to them. Often, it results in fresh, creative solutions. Kids ask lots of questions. I think we've all experienced a toddler going, why, 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 and how come and how come not? Kids are also experimenting all the time so they can learn things for themselves. In a way, they all act like scientists. Thomas Edison was once quoted as saying, the greatest invention in the world is the mind of a child. So to conclude our brain science, try and bring the child in you back out. Ask questions, experiment, break down preconceived conceptions, and form new relationships between things. Draw, dance, listen to music like nobody's watching. Sweet, sweet. Love it, love it, love it. Excellent. So, yeah, we just want to thank you again for doing this with us, coming in here, chopping it up about what you have going on, talking about kids. Like I said, um, I reread my issues that I have um, today, and I'm just like, yo, I, I really hope that the movement keeps growing and, and growing and growing and more people um, get access to your work. I oh, appreciate it. You So you have more than one issue, huh? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, there might be some confusion because what what I when I said issue one is available, what happened since I've seen you is that I decided to go back and remaster the series. Oh, okay. So I, wow. re, 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 I relaunched them back into the ether, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> uh, it's still the same story and mo and still the the same scenes. I just added some extra scenes and recolored the book. So I because I originally did all that work. The one the ones you have. Especially issue one, I, I did that way back in 2013 when I was actually working on it. So um, obviously time has passed. So I wanted to, uh, before I compiled them all into one trade paperback, I, mm -hmm. wanted re I wanted to reissue them. And then and then when the trade paperback comes around, I'm going to conclude, conclude the final chapter with that. So you can get the whole thing with new material in the final chapter. That'll be dope. Make That's going to be dope. Well. Yeah. Or, um, <laughs> that'll be dope well once again thanks for coming through we appreciate you um chopping it up with us um lady bounce you can find us wherever you get your favorite podcasts we're on facebook twitter youtube tiktok make sure you follow us every day to get your daily self-care assignment and share it with a friend it doesn't cost anything to share a link or two look for black comics Hit up my man's here. I'm about to go to the website now because you said you don't rewrote the book. Now I got to go get another one because <laughs> I can't have it being an incomplete yeah. pack. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. Plus, we got Christmas so, shopping still to do. <laughs> yes, go. we do. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. And the, 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 um, I, I'm getting the stuff printed up now, so it'll be restocked by next week. But if you want to wait a week, you can also the, the, the caps and the shirts will be available, and it, you know you can choose if you're interested. You can uh, choose your your colorway and whatever. Or even better. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's our show. It's your boy Pick a Fence. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. 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 Thank <laughs> you.